Hello and what is up everyone, it is Hachi from The Art of Dota and in this video I'm going to be telling you guys why you should be playing IO if you're trying to get some easy MMR in the patch 7.15. Now IO is probably the best he's ever been in a long time. Mr. Ice Frog just over buffed him a tad bit and he is quite broken right now. Now if you don't believe me I have some stats to prove it. If you look at the Dota buff win rates, he has roughly a 56% win rate in the Divine bracket right now with a 10% pick rate. Even in the lower MMR brackets, he maintains almost a 50% win percentage with around a 5% pick rate. And these are the highest numbers I've ever seen for the hero in a long time. Usually, Io is sitting at around 30%, even 40% win rates and he's usually one of the lowest win rate heroes in the game. But with the recent patches to Io and the reworks to his ability, not only did it make him a lot better, but it also made him a lot easier to play. And that's where you come in. Because most people, they look at the hero and they're like, okay, that's Io. It's, it's in another realm. It's not even like in Dota 2. It's like the Meepo players, right? You look at Io as like the Meepo of supports where you're either an IO player, you spam him, or you're just a non-IO player. You don't even look at him. You don't consider him. But I'm going to tell you right now that even if you don't have much experience on the hero, you can pick him up within, say, roughly 30 games and learn how to play him proficiently. Of course, you're not going to have the mastery of a player like me who's played thousands of games on the hero, but you're going to be able to, again, perform and win games. You might not have my ridiculous win percentage right now with the hero, which is pretty much like 80% or something like that. I'll show you my uh, uh, recent matches that ended the game. But... I would say you can have a pretty solid win rate. Now, there's many reasons why uh, he's easier to play, but I'm going to just go over his abilities first. So what they did to Io's abilities, if you didn't read the patch notes, is with Tether, it is now an infinite duration. Again, this makes him a lot easier to manage as you don't have to manage when your Tether is going to end. You can Tether to someone and you're going to stay on them as long as you don't manually break it by recasting the ability or you don't break the range. Again, this just takes things off of your brain that you don't have to worry about in terms of the mechanics of the hero and then you can focus on you know the game itself, you know, making plays where you need to be, what you need to do. Again, the reason why the hero was so hard in the past was not only he was mechanically, I will not say difficult, but he was unique and you had to kind of like work up this mechanics on the hero like you would like a hero like Invoker. But now, um, again, Tether is a lot simpler. You can stay tethered infinitely, but also additionally, you gain the move speed of whatever you're tethered to. And that is true to what how I said it. So... That means that if you're tethered to someone and you get slowed, but whoever you're tethered to doesn't get slowed, the slow is not in effect. Now, that might seem broken, but that's just how it works right now. So, for example, if I tether to a Luna and I get open wounds by a Life Sealer, I'm still moving as fast as a Luna. It's like the open wounds never was even used. Unless, of course, I untether to Luna. In that case, I will be slowed. So that means you can just juke in fights incredibly easily uh, compared to what you could do in the past. And that was one of the hardest parts of playing Aya was just staying alive in team fights. Because you usually, if you're playing against players who know what they're doing, be the focus of their attention. But now if you can tether to fast heroes like Luna's, even this game, Lina, you're able to just juke and jive in fights and kite enemies incredibly easily. And now, additionally, what you can do with Tether is because the duration is infinite, but it still has a cooldown, of course, you can Tether to a hero, and if the cooldown of 12 seconds fully runs its course, you can untether and retether to something else immediately. And I think this is also going to be changed because, again, I'm expecting a nerf for IO. So if you're trying to get your MMR with him, you better do it quick uh, as... Coming next Thursday, I can't tell you what's going to happen. So, with the tether being buffed the way it is, you might think, that's that's all. 
but also additionally they reworked his spirits which now doesn't have a sub ability to go in and out anymore if you remember in the past Io actually had uh, six abilities he had two sub abilities spears in and spirits out which allowed you to precisely move the spirits to a radius of whatever you desired but now they completely removed that he just has an ability called spirits movement now that either moves the spirits in if they're out or they moves them all the way out if they're in so they can no longer be in a radius in between they're either super close to you or they're at the max distance now uh, originally i thought this was a nerf to the hero but because they also gave spirits a slow now um that scales up to 80 percent actually at max uh, level four it really isn't a nerf at all and in fact it's pretty much just a buff not only did it make spirits easier to use it made them a little bit less precise but again that doesn't matter anymore because when you gain the move speed of a fast hero spirits are incredibly easy to hit because you can just move them at max range and additionally because they have a slow you can just pop them with the spirits they're not gonna be able to move and then you usually are able to hit all five without much effort um at least for me i can't say for you guys because again i do have a lot of games on the hero and adjusting for me wasn't that difficult and i'm assuming uh within a couple of games you know what you're doing with their spirits again it is it's they're slow right they're standing still pretty much once they get hit by the spirits uh when you have maxed out level four spirits it's again not that difficult at all and you can tell that io is a lot easier to work around in drafts because in professional dota where Io is probably one of the top picks right now. Even the Chinese teams are playing him. And Swindle Melons said it himself. Uh, if the Chinese teams, and not only just one Chinese team, like all the Chinese teams are playing Io right now, um, there's a little bit of a uh, imbalance there. Because again, Io provides so much utility to your draft. There's really not just one way to play him. You can do anything you want with the hero and it will work. He not only allows you to dominate the laning stage by winning the regen war because effectively every set of regen that your team buys with the IO on your team in that lane it's going to be doubled because again you can use the regen for yourself and then you can tether to your ally and give them the regen as well. So what that means is for example if you buy a salve and you buy a tango and your teammate buys a salve and you buy a tango and it's a 2v2 your team will get double the value out of that salve and tango that you bought and you also get double the value out of the salve that your teammate bought and potentially you know one or two tangos if they can share you it which will eventually mean that the enemy is going to run out of regen before you do so they're either going to have to buy more regen and use a courier or they're gonna have to play the lane with low health while you're at a higher HP, which will result in most likely a kill onto them. And those kills snowball, because as I said, as IO levels up, the more levels you have on spirits, they start doing more and more damage, the slow adds up as well. And especially once you get a soul ring, which will allow you to just sustain in the lane with infinite mana, because when you cast soul ring, not only do you have a free cast of your spirits, as your spirits only go up to 150 mana, mana cost you also give mana to whoever you tether to which will give them also pretty much infinite mana as long as you have the hp to sustain your soul ring which will allow you to just nuke anyone out of the lane and just dominate it uh, pretty much io hits this point where the enemy cannot lane anymore and their only option is to go gank you and actually kill you or just don't even come to the lane because they're not going to contest you for CS or farm in that lane anymore once you get a soul ring and like level 5. And once you hit level 7, you pretty much can kill anyone because the spirits do roughly 900 magic damage in a short duration, especially if you just spam all your orbs and hit them uh, consecutively, the enemy will not expect that damage output once you hit level 7 and IO hits a major power spike at that point. Now, after Soul Ring, of course, you're going to want to build some form of regen on the hero. So, with how his abilities work now, of course, uh, notice I didn't mention Bottle, because that used to be a very popular item on IO. 
Now, the reason why you don't build bottle anymore on the hero is the meta is pretty laning stage uh, orientated. Uh, you don't really want to leave the lane to kind of check the rune. And again, the banner runes don't even spawn until five minutes now. So it's just difficult to get bottle charges on the hero. Now, they did buff bottle slightly by giving it more regen, but... Uh, I would say it's still not worth it unless you're roaming the map a lot and you see in this game I was roaming a lot with the Scarith Mage but with just some clarities and Tango Salves, Urn, Soul Ring were able to sustain without a bottle and I wouldn't recommend for you to buy a bottle. Um, if you really know what you're doing you can get a lot of value out of bottle because it's burst heal but uh, I would say the best builder right now is definitely just to go for a Soul Ring get an urn, and of course don't forget your magic wand, because again you can share the magic wand regen between you and your ally, save them in a clutch moment, and it can be just game changing as Io is one of the best early game counter initiators. The enemy team, if they play too crazy, now you see in this game we're actually going for kills, but again if it's a more even game where the enemy is trying to go for ganks, if you have a TP, and again, make sure you have TP a lot of times, but again, without a bottle, you don't have that burst heal. So it becomes a little bit harder to respond to ganks without a um, bottle. But again, if you have a magic wand and you have urn, you can turn around the fight. You just tether in and overcharge. Now, I talked about Io's abilities being reworked, making him not only easier to play, but also a stronger hero overall, but his talents have also been reworked slightly, making him completely broken in the certain lineups. And that's why Swindomelons said that Io is probably one of the most versatile first pick heroes because it can just fit into so many different drafts. So if you look at his talents right now, he has a experience gain talent at level 10. Which doesn't seem like much, but this talent used to be a talent that gave him a bigger range on his spirits. Now, that was a nice talent and all because it did nerf the range of his spirits a little bit in a previous patch. But this experience gain talent can be just game breaking. And the reason for that is his level 15 talent is a huge power spike. Now, you can read it, Tether Grand Scepter bonus. And you can see the implications of that, but also don't count out 90 spirits hero damage. 90 spirits hero damage is a lot. And I've soloed carry heroes with this talent because they don't respect the damage from the spirits. Because again, not a lot of people play IO and not a lot of people go for this talent and utilize it the way I do. Because what you're able to do, uh, you're not going to see it in this game, but you can buy Helm of the Dom. If you want to know more about that, uh, watch my last video where I did a full replay analysis on one of Zai's games. But with Helm of the Dom, it pretty much acts as Io's boots. Because again, because you gain the move speed of whoever you tether to, you don't need boots anymore. If you have trouble moving around the map because you don't have someone to tether to, just buy Helm of the Dom, get a creep, and tether to that. And that's your boots. And additionally, it's going to give you HP regen that can be shared between you and your allies through tether. And it also gives you an attack speed aura, which will be great for pushes. So what you can do with Helm of the Dom and the second level 15 talent is you can pretty much play IO solo. You don't need to be with any teammates. You can be there pushing out dangerous lanes. And as I said before, remember what I said, if you get slowed and the enemy doesn't get slowed that does not slow you or if you get slowed and your tether target doesn't get slowed that doesn't slow you that's what i meant to say so that means that you can tether to that creep and you can run around and if they focus you instead of the creep you pretty much can run at like 400 500 move speed depending on the level of your tether and at that point you're super hard to catch super hard to lock down additionally you're slowing targets with the orbs as you hit them with it and they, you pretty much can outrun most carries here most carry heroes and out damage them as well because again if they're not hitting you they're not killing you and you're just running in circles around them slapping them in the face with your balls and they're not going to have a good time now that of course is what you can do with the Helm of the Dawn build. 
But as you see, the reason why I don't go for it in this game is there's really no need to. Not only do, does the Drow have a Helm of Dom herself, but when you have a hero to tether to, this is the other play style you can do with Io, where you just kind of follow one of your heroes around and you buff them up, relocate them around the map, and make sure they get pretty much free farm because they can't get ganked. Because if they do get ganked, you can be prepared to relocate them out. As you saw, I even did that earlier in this video, save my Lina or you can just heal them up. So in this game, notice I went for a hood into a pipe. That's probably my second favorite build on IL right, uh, right now to go for because most enemy teams have a good mixture of magic damage. You see in this game, they have the Shadow Shaman, SF, and even Jug with the spin clockwork as well. And it's gonna mitigate all of that, but additionally, it's just gonna give you HP regen, which is what you'll want on the hero. Right? You just want to buy regen items and you want to tank up. Of course, if the enemy team has a full physical damage lineup, uh, I consider other items like a mech. And of course, utility items like uh, Glimmer Cape and stuff like that is not bad on IO either. Now, there is potential to take IO and carry him in the late game. Or, not carry him take Io and turn him into a carry in the late game and that's with his level 20 talent and of course if you do go for the experience gain talent you can get there a lot earlier but with the level 20 talent you can attack tether allies target which will allow you to pretty much be a carry if you tether to someone that is attacking super fast and that could be a hero like a windrunner with her ultimate or troll warlord um, or maybe just even a luna and of course, this even applies with split shot abilities like Gyrocopter and Medusa. You can go wild with that, you know, buy crazy items like Desolator, um, Maelstrom. And I'm sure you've seen the highlights if you followed the hero and win your games like that. Now, to close off the video, I'd like to show you my match history. Show I'm not bullshitting you. Uh, <laughs> you can see, I mean, I am an experienced IO player, so the results may vary, but I can guarantee you if you have you know some good game sense you can pick up the hero within like 30 games you know play some party queue and then take it to solo queue now the difference between what i can do with io and what you can if you're just you know new to the hero is that i'm able to respond in situations that you might not be comfortable with you might learn to play io in like a dual lane with like a luna but for example, if you're expected to uh, play a dual off lane in a, like a weird lane, a 2v3 potentially, you might not know what to do there. Whereas I've had so much experience on Hero, I pretty much can do whatever and get away with it and get you know, full effectiveness out of the Hero. And again, that only can come with experience. But I think he's so good right now. If you can find those good games where it's just a good IO game for you or you, you're playing with a friend and you duel up, um, I'm just going to go over some quick combos you can go and play right now and just get some MMR. So first off, I would say the easiest to start off is just Io Luna. So with Luna, you can dual lane with her. She provides you a good damage aura, which will allow you to trade very effectively. Now the starting item build, um, if you don't know it, uh, it's just dual gauntlets and then regen at this point. And you can just trade very effectively with this Lunar Blessing. And once you get Soul Ring, of course, building the Gauntlets into Soul Ring, you can just spam Lucent Beam, blast people in the face, and at that point, usually just dominate the lane. Now, additionally, uh, I did mention it quickly about Io's Power Spike at level 15, but I want to really emphasize it here, is that you give someone a free Axe. And for a hero like Luna that has an Axe that she doesn't really want to buy in most games, she'll happily take a free Ags. it is a super buff to uh, Luna where she can just dish out insane of uh, magic damage in a fight once Io hits level 15. Of course, you're able to buff her up in terms of her physical damage as well with your overcharge. So I definitely recommend Luna as one of the best heroes to play with if you're especially new to the hero. But you can also go with Gyrocopter. Gyrocopter is the same with Luna. He's very strong in the laning stage with his rocket barrage. And of course, uh, your soul ring is allowed to sustain that. Well, as additionally cast rockets and stuff like that. 
etc. And of course, he does synergize pretty well with not only Io's Agnum's talent, but also his level 20 talent, of course, attack, or attack, ally, tether, target, whatever that's called. Basically, you attack whatever gyro attacks, which also applies to his flat cannon, and it applies to the side gunner that you give him with your level 15 talent. And I think gyrocopter is great, especially as he is able to fight. So when you relocate him into a fight, he can just call down and rain fire onto the enemy team. So uh, most of the old combos that you pick with IO aren't really a thing anymore. So you might be thinking of IO CK, IO Tiny. Um, those aren't really the best heroes, not only in the meta right now, but just to run with IO. You kind of want to pick stronger laners in a sense and even just potentially ranged heroes because again you're going to get more value out of being able to tether to them because you want to play kind of in the same pocket so you get a lot of value out of tethering fast ranged heroes over heroes that are going to just blink around and go crazy in that case of course you can still play the hero but you'll need to adapt it's not as easy as just tethering a luna buffering her up and just watching her go right you're gonna have to go for the helm of dawn build do your own thing learn how to kite dish damage with your orbs and stuff like that but that's gonna be it for this video i hope it helped you guys out in your journey of playing io and make sure if you want to get some mmr with this hero make sure you do it fast as he's probably gonna get nerfed soon and i'll see you all in the next video it is hachi signing out peace out everyone